Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. I'm Malcolm Reed. Y'all, I had it in my mind to do a brisket mac and cheese for a while now. I just hadn't done it, but I was strolling through my local grocery store and I saw these packs of these gorgeous certified Angus beef short ribs. And I said, self, that would make an excellent mac and cheese. So I picked them up, brought them home. And I'm gonna get them seasoned up barbecue style. And that's exactly what we're doing today. Barbecue short rib mac and cheese. Creamy, pasta, cheesy, meets that beautifully braised short rib. It's gonna be epic. Let's get to cooking. Now with these short ribs, the first thing we gotta do is get some seasoning on them. So I'm gonna season these a lot like I would a brisket because I'm thinking barbecue short ribs. First thing I've got some of my buddy's Swine Lice prime beef seasoning. I put that on brisket, so I'm gonna put it on short ribs. And what we're gonna do is just give them all a decent little coat. I'd say medium. I'm not going super crazy with it, but I want all sides of that short rib seasoned. And these short ribs can take a lot of seasoning. It's a dense piece of beef. We're gonna cook down a lot of that fat. It's gonna render down. We're just gonna have succulent beef left when it's done. And we're gonna put that on top of some mac and cheese. Now for that barbecue layer, I just got some of my The Barbecue Rub. You could use whatever barbecue rub you like. We're just gonna give it a good coat of that too. Let's go build us some bark on the outside. It's gonna give it a little bit of sweetness, but it's gonna give us some really good color. So now all we gotta do is let these short ribs hang out for about 20, 30 minutes here on the cutting board. Let that seasoning start to work into them. Perfect time. I'm going outside and firing up my Grilla Silverback pellet grill. Got some pecan pellets in there today for some nice mild smoke. I'm gonna start it at 250 degrees so we can get a nice little bark, get some color going on the outside of these short ribs. And then we're gonna bump it up when we braise them and get them really, really uber tender. All right, y'all, that silverback sitting at 250 degrees. I'm ready to put them on the pit. I'm gonna set them right up towards the front because I want some of that extra heat to come on to kind of get them browning faster. Just want to get some color on them. I'm not smoking them for a real long time. They may stay on here an hour and a half, maybe two hours. That looks good. And we'll come back and check on these dudes in about 30 minutes. Got the pecan smoke rolling. We'll let this smoker do his thing, y'all. So while those short ribs are out there getting some smoke on the pellet grill, I'm gonna start working on my braising liquid. And I've just got about a medium-sized onion. We're gonna put a little rough chop on it. You don't have to dice it super fine. So we're just gonna take these, and I got me an aluminum pan here. And then for my garlic, I'm not chopping it. I'm not doing anything in it. I've just got about, what, about eight cloves. That's about a whole head of garlic. I'm just gonna take them and spread them out in there. They're gonna cook down. They're gonna give us all that garlic flavor. And if we need to pick them out when we get ready to get our short ribs out, we can do it no problem. Got a little bit of butter, about a quarter stick. We'll just cut it into some pats, spread that around. And then a little bit of olive oil. Remember, we're gonna render down these short ribs in this liquid. So we don't need a ton of extra fat in it. They're a real fatty piece of meat anyway. They're gonna cook down and give us all that good flavor. You do wanna season this up some, so I'm using some of that same Swine Life Prime Beef again, just to give it that good savory element, a little bit of spice. I'm just shake it around. Now let's go put these on the pit. So it's been about 30 minutes. Good time to check, see what our color's looking like, which right now, man, y'all look at that. That is beautiful. They're starting to get that barky look. I want them to go a little bit longer and I want these vegetables to soften up for the braising liquid. So just stick those right behind them. Let them hang out. We'll come back in another 30 minutes. It's probably gonna be time to stir the vegetables and start thinking about when we're gonna move those over there to get them super tender. These short ribs have been on here for about an hour and a half. Look at them, they're starting to render some fat. We got some beautiful color on them. That's what I want them to look like. Man, we can get some bone drawback on that one. You know they're rocking and rolling. So our onions and our garlic, they're giving us that flavor we want. They're softened up. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these short ribs and I'm gonna put them over in this pan, but I wanna make sure that bone is up. I want the meat down in the goodness. So we're just gonna carefully use some tongs and flip them over and stand them up. That bone on the upside. We gotta get some liquid in our pan to help these short ribs cook down. I've got some of my vinegar sauce. That's about half a bottle. I'm just eyeballing it. And now to fortify that and give us a little more liquid, I've just got some beef broth. And I'm not trying to submerge them. I just want the liquid to come up on the edge. Now we're simply gonna take this pan, cover it with some aluminum foil, trap in all that heat. That's sealed up good. We're gonna close this lid. I'm gonna raise the temperature up to about 300 degrees. And I want these short ribs to render down and get super soft. All right, y'all, these short ribs have been on for about three hours. It's time to take them off and check them for doneness. We're just going to grab them off the pit here, take them over to the counter. Then we're going to peel this full back ever so carefully because it is hot. 
Got that short rib facial coming out. That's good for the skin right there. All that goodness. Look at these dudes, man. They have broke down. Those bones are popping out. Now you want to get a probe thermometer and fill them for tenderness. We're looking about like a brisket. We want it well over 200 degrees. And that jugger is soft. 207, 208, 209. That is perfect. I mean, that's right where I want them. They're pillowy soft. It goes in like butter. Now you just want them to hang out. I'm gonna show you how I make the mac and cheese to serve this dish up. So to start this cheese sauce, I've got a quarter cup of butter, that's half a stick. We're going in a pot here on about medium heat. So we'll let that butter get to melting. Then we're gonna add our flour to kind of make a roux. After we've cooked that flour for just a couple minutes, we're ready to add some liquid to it. And I've just got whole milk. We're gonna add two cups. We're gonna slowly pour it in. Don't just dump it all in. This makes it really smooth, taking your time and doing it slow. As that sauce heats up, it starts to thicken. That's what that flour and butter mixture does to it. We're ready for our cheeses. Now, I've got some sharp cheddar, I've got some Gruyere, and I've got some Colby Jack. All three of these combined to make a really great cheese sauce. So what we're gonna do is just start putting a little of each one of them in. If you put too much, it'll clump up on you, but you wanna use a really good cheese that'll melt, something that's got a little bite to it. I like mine extra cheesy, so I go, you know, four cups of shredded cheese in it. And make sure you shred your cheese yourself. If you're using it straight out of the bag, it's got that starch on it. It doesn't want to melt as good. Now we got to season it a little bit. So I've got some salt. We're just going to do a couple cranks and some fresh cracked black pepper. A couple cranks. Smooth. It's creamy. How does it taste? Let's see. It's hot. Mm. All right, y'all. I got these short ribs out of that braising liquid. Let me show you what we're going to do with them. These are just succulent little morsels of gelatinous beef. You just pull them right off that bone. Oh, it smells so good. And I like to take each one of them and just kind of hand shred them. They're pretty much just gonna fall apart on you, but you got all of this delicious meat. When you serve short ribs, I like to go ahead and have it kind of pulled up. You can serve them on that bone if you want. Let people do this themselves, but for this dish, it works really good. You shred them by hand. I don't know if I can do this without testing it. Oh, it's like meat butter. So now we're gonna take our pasta. I've just got elbow macaroni cooked according to the package directions. We're gonna add a little bit at a time. Don't add all of it at once. We wanna stir it in and see if we need it all. Cause I want my sauce ratio to noodle ratio heavy on the sauce. So we're gonna take this decadent mac and cheese, put it in one of our little ramekins here. Now these are individual portions, main course style. Then we're gonna take some of this delicious short rib and we're just gonna put it right over the top of it y'all. Just like that. It is time to dig in mac and cheese with that short rib, it's smoking hot. I know this is gonna be good. Y'all gonna have to bear with me. That's too good for words. This might be the best dish I've ever made. Hey, thank y'all for hanging out with us here at How to Barbecue Right. If y'all like what we're doing, subscribe to that channel. Y'all know y'all can find us on all the social channels. Shell and I are going to talk about this short rib mac and cheese, everything it took to do it on our next podcast. So y'all give that a listen too. We'll see y'all next time. It's time to get fat and sassy. Going back in. Mm. Put that on the menu.